When I first started, my only real goal was to be more creative and to put it out there, to get as many eyes as I could on the work that I was doing. And really, that's still what my goal is, to push myself creatively and to get as many eyes as I can. How do you do that? There's like a hundred different ways as an artist. And so choosing the path that works for you sometimes takes a little bit of finessing. You can be in a gallery, you can be at a, on Etsy, you can do pop-up shows, you can be in cafes. There's like so many options. The last couple of years, I've spent doing a lot of pop-up shops in Montreal, in Toronto, and in New York, and just really, you know, talking to people and getting a sense of what they were connecting with, what was resonating with them in the work that I do. And trying to take that resonance and connect it with what resonates for me so that I was making work that worked for me and worked for them. Pop-up shops are a lot of work. They're travel, they're time away from my family, they're time away from the studio. They are, you know, I've got to be on and talking about how much I love my art, even though I love my art. I have to be talking about how much I love it in a really, you know, wonderful way when really I'm an introvert and I'm used to working by myself in my studio and not talking to anybody. So that, that's been a challenge and it's taken a lot out of me and it takes a lot of time to recover from those um, and get back into a space where I'm just creating to create. Uh, so I made the choice this year to kind of move away from pop-up shops. But I realized that in my studio, I have really large works that I send to the galleries. And then I have all of these small works that I was taking for the pop-up shops that I can send them to the gallery. But the, also, like, I just have a lot because I did a lot of playing over the last couple of years. So I started taking pictures of them this week and I started to put them up on an online gallery just so that they were out and visible and in front of people's eyes a little bit more than, you know, in my studio where nobody really saw them, even me. I found some treasures in there and I'm so excited that I found them because now they're little pieces of inspiration of things that I can try again on larger works and that I don't even remember doing some of them, but they just are like magic. So I want to share a couple of them with you today. I won't do too many, but I just wanted to kind of, you know, show you what I found. Uh, this is the first one, which is one of my favorite original pieces from uh, the Lav Lavishly Minimal series. Um, it's called Split Personality, and I love that explosion of black. And I haven't really done a lot of that work recently. Like I, I've, I've changed it a bit, that series, and I would love to go back to that just real impromptu style of let's see what happens and make it work. That with this lovely full stroke on the side is so much fun to have that, that contrast. I really like that split personality. The next piece that I found was a complete surprise. I do not even remember doing this one, but I'm so in love in like 15 different directions. I love it. This one's called Affair of the Heart. Affairs of the Heart, excuse me. Uh, and there's just a little touch of gold under there. I don't know if you can see right here and then a strip there, but the coral background is what really surprised me. I really, really like that. And I know it's not pink, but the coral there is just so powerful. It makes this little 10 by 10 piece like really pop out. I imagine it in like a huge frame with a really thick mat so that it's just like this little focal point of color in the middle of white. I'm excited to see who's going to get that one and what they're going to do with it. And then the last piece was really about texture for me. Uh, this blue I used a lot last spring. But that texture in the cloud to me is just beautiful. And the texture underneath the gold leaf there that really comes out, I like that effect. Mm -hmm. So I think that will be explored a bit further, like the texture beneath the gold leaf to really see different kinds of reflections come out of that gold leaf because it really changes, it changes it a lot. I have one more piece, but I didn't find this piece. This piece actually has been hanging upstairs because I kind of love it. So I was getting ready for the paper show that was in January and I decided to do at least this one work on this handmade paper that's made in Montreal, probably 15 minutes from where I live, maybe 10. 
and I love the edges. I, I mounted it on another piece of paper so that you could really see those edges. And I love that the black and white really went gray on this and that the gold went a bit rusty and coppery. But the effect of it is just really stunning. And it's one of those small pieces that kind of draws you in. The imperfection of the line there. Sorry, went out of focus. Come back. The imperfection of the line here and the really uh, 90 degree angles here of the up and down lines. I love that contrast. So I think I'll be playing a little bit more on the gray background and see how that comes about. Also just colored backgrounds in general. I think between those two, there's a lot of interest that happens when there's a bit of color in the background, which I haven't explored very much. I'm pretty much a white background kind of girl. Um, but we'll see where that leads. So... I had a really good time this week, and if you enjoyed seeing my little discoveries, then make sure to give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'd love to hear about something that you found recently that is just made your heart sing, that you completely forgot about, that you're like, oh my god, I love that, I'm so glad I found it. So tell me about that in the comments, and we'll talk to you again next time. Thank you so much. Bye.